Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on the world of big data. Today, my guests are from Boundary. They're a brand new startup. Uh, they're just coming out of Series A, and they're here to talk to us today. We have uh, Ben Black, who's the CEO and co-founder, and uh, Bob Quillo, who's the uh, VP of Marketing. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. It's good to be here. Absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really thrilled we could have you. Uh, it sounds like exciting times. But um, why don't we just jump into it? I, I brought your slides up, and uh, let, why don't we start with that? That sounds great, thanks. So just some background on the company. Um, we closed our, our first round of funding in January. Uh, my co-founder and I, Cliff, uh, we have extensive backgrounds in doing large-scale uh, operations uh, and development for uh, online services like Amazon, Microsoft, uh, and then we have expanded that with uh, a lot of expertise from places like NetScout and VMware, um, SolarWinds, uh, to really bring a, a lot of uh, sort of industry firepower and industry expertise uh, to this problem. Uh, and what we do is uh, real-time network infrastructure monitoring uh, provided as a service that uh, runs uh, on demand anywhere, pay as you go, uh, built for extremely high scale uh, and for the uh, agile dynamic environments that uh, are particularly prevalent for users of cloud services. A uh, little more background on Cliff and I. Uh, I spent uh, a number of years at Amazon running networking and security, uh, and then at Microsoft uh, building a CDN that they have internally that's actually now part of Azure. Um, did some early work on what's now EC2 and uh, a lot of R&D work in network optimization and network routing, um, as well as uh, uh, standards work with the ITF. And Cliff uh, was at PowerSet uh, and then went through the acquisition and was at Microsoft uh, as part of Bing and uh, has also done a lot of work in uh, very early uh, NoSQL systems and we've, we've continued that tradition as, as we've grown. So the vision for us is really to uh, collect all of the data all of the time uh, and do that uh, in real time uh, to offer that as a service that anyone can consume, not just experts, uh, and deliver that back out via um, really uh, tremendous cutting edge uh, visualizations that are live and interactive, uh, and also expose all of that through open APIs uh, and provide um, very uh, convenient integration points for uh, typical tooling that people will have in their infrastructure, whether it's Chef or Puppet or any kind of scripts that they might have, uh, continuous integration systems like Jenkins, um, we combine that all together. And our strategy here is really uh, to have this core platform uh, on which people can build by publishing in uh, very high volumes of real-time operation metrics so that they don't have to make a decision about what they collect. They can collect everything all the time. Um, presenting that as a service, uh, and that's dashboards, graphs, that sort of stuff. Uh, presenting it also as an API so that people can really treat it as a platform regardless of, of how they want to use it. They can build whatever makes the most sense for them. Uh, and then finally to make it uh, easy and efficient for people to integrate that into the rest of their operations through those uh, automation systems. So as I said, this is a SaaS product. We do real-time monitoring, and when we say real-time, we mean uh, second by second. We deliver this as a service, um, and uh, we simultaneously make this incredibly easy for people to, to use. So. There isn't some trade-off here where uh, what people might be familiar with for monitoring systems uh, are very difficult. They might take days or weeks to get implemented. They are often very expensive. Um, we do away with that. There is no configuration. People uh, can and, and do get up and running 
uh, in minutes and uh, have value immediately out of, uh, out of using the system. Um, people show up, they sign up, they install meters on any of the servers that they want to monitor in their infrastructure, hopefully all of them, uh, and within seconds they have data in the dashboard. Uh, they have uh, really unprecedented visibility into what's going on in their network infrastructure, how their machines are, are interacting with each other and with uh, the world. And how this works is that uh, our customers install a small lightweight agent on um, the servers in their infrastructure. Uh, those meters collect uh, information from every single packet moving in and out of those machines and uh, creates a set of records that are then exported to us about each of those interactions, those flows. Uh, it is carried over the internet securely. We do extensive authentication in both directions uh, and encrypt all of the traffic in flight into our collection system. Internally, our platform was designed from the ground up to be multi-tenant to keep customer uh, data separated uh, as it's being processed uh, and then back out through our streaming API again uh, delivered only over um, SSL, and that platform then presents these APIs and uh, the visualizations that allow people to really make sense of this data and understand what's going on in their infrastructure. So, on to the question of who uses this, and this, there really are uh, a lot of folks who can use this, I would say everyone who has infrastructure um, can benefit from better monitoring, especially real-time monitoring so that they can have uh, much lower time to identify problems, they can uh, get out ahead of the problems. So in particular, this means what we might call DevOps teams, so these are folks who tend to be much earlier adopters, they're really embracing the agile dynamic nature of modern infrastructure. Um, so they're continuously deploying, they're continuously monitoring and analyzing the effects of those deployments. Uh, they want to detect problems as quickly as possible, uh, hopefully before they actually are visible to users. They're very interested in integrating that with their existing automation, Chef, Jenkins, Puppet, et cetera. Uh, and so they are aggressively adopting this because um, they really don't have any other system that will give them this depth of visibility um, with this ease of use. Uh, on EC2, customers have a pretty limited set of choices for how they can monitor, especially at the network. Uh, typical uh, network monitoring systems, especially for the sort of volume that we do, uh, are built with the expectation that you can attach an appliance to the network. Uh, that's really non-starter. Uh, in EC2 or any other cloud environment. Uh, so being strictly server-based allows us to operate anywhere, whether that's EC2, physical machines, virtual machines, makes no difference. Uh, and finally, the sort of traditional users of uh, network monitoring tools, network operations, security operations folks, uh, who can now, uh, at very low cost, very low uh, operational overhead, get extremely high resolution visibility to everything that's going on on their network uh, and that allows them to uh, do their jobs much more efficiently. They can uh, use our APIs to create whatever sorts of uh, queries they need in order to identify specific problems to them, whether it's uh, you know attacks or it's uh, compliance violations. Um, they have the ability to customize this to make it work best for them. Just a couple of uh, screenshots from uh, earlier versions of the, the dashboard talking about uh, you know, the sort of typical things that you'll see in here, whether it's just raw traffic, uh, moving through time to analyze historical data, uh, viewing it at multiple time resolutions. We do have that second data, but uh, sometimes uh, it makes more sense to look at a larger spread of time. Uh, looking at top talkers, which is a very common thing when you're doing network monitoring who are the big generators of traffic. Uh, maybe you want to 
look at that in terms of geography or drill into that to figure out you know, what specific applications, what specific uh, ports are interested here. Looking across a large set of uh, devices to see the aggregate traffic um, across different pieces of your infrastructure. And finally, uh, some examples of uh, the visualizations that we're using, some of which are familiar, for example, the color-coded coropleth map for, for geography. Heat maps uh, often show up, um, perhaps not uh, like ours, though, where you actually are seeing real-time views of traffic on every single port across every single system that's being monitored, uh, again, updated real-time. Uh, and because our data is highly dimensional, we don't squash everything down into being time in some other single dimension. We actually retain things like the source and destination IP address and the MAC address and ports and really all of that rich data that's in there uh, is highly dimensional. And so we take advantage of that in presenting highly dimensional views of the data and visualizations that allow people to interact with that dimensionality to essentially construct uh, a query or a filter on the fly uh, visually to find the, the traffic that's of most interest to them. So just to wrap up, uh, obviously this is a, a huge market opportunity, um, uh, but really we're looking at it as a, an opportunity to really transform the way that uh, monitoring happens, that operations happens, that people can now have the ability to, with very little overhead, monitor everything, to do that in real time uh, and in a way that really fits into the model that is emerging as uh, the future, uh, that agile dynamic environment uh, represented by the cloud but not strictly uh, limited to the cloud. And uh, a big part of that is uh, doing it as a service so that people have incredibly low overhead to adopt this uh, and then uh, really a pay-as-you-go model as we see in, in any other utility-like service. Well, well, th well, thanks for that, Ben. You know, I got, I got probably a dumb question here. I'm envisioning like this mission sure. control, right? And they're getting this information. Are they deploying resources to uh, uh, basically fires that they see or potential roadblocks or uh, traffic jams? Is, is that how it would work? You know, there, there are all sorts of ways that, that people can use this data. Um, some pretty common ones are, for example, uh, you know, you deploy new code and you have accidentally deployed buggy code and suddenly uh, the traffic on the machines to which you deployed the code dropped. Uh, how do you know that? Well, we have an annotation system that's integrated with Jenkins that allows uh, direct injection of code deployment annotations into the system so that you can actually see that overlaid on the traffic so you can identify the correlation very quickly between deploying code and the, the traffic drop. Um, you can drill into that and see you know, what specific ports were involved. That tells you what applications are, are involved here, which set of hosts. Um, maybe you're dealing with some sort of attack and you can say, for example, show me um, traffic going to this IP address from machines in China. Uh, again, you can do this on the fly, uh, constructing these queries um, in, through a variety of means, uh, including visually. Uh, to really narrow down the traffic to just the, the stuff that's of interest to you. You know, whether it's there's way too much traffic over here, or it's coming from a strange location, or there's not enough traffic where you expected it. Uh, all those sorts of things uh, happen every day for, for people who are operating infrastructure. Uh, and currently, it's just very hard for them to get access to the data that they need to do that job effectively. And the end result of that is uh, more downtime, more OPEX, uh, and a lot lower customer satisfaction ultimately in, in, in the services that are, those folks are delivering. So I was going to ask you about that, Ben. How are these guys getting this done now? Do they just have like scripts running and uh, uh, do they just get flagged so with like a lot. Sure, sure. They're, they're using a lot of different tools. Um, you know, open source tools that, that they've sort of uh, hacked up to, to do what they need. Um, sometimes they're using commercial tools as well. But what we found is universally um, people are doing one of two things. They're either using multiple monitoring tools, which presents uh, all sorts of challenges in uh, moving between them because you can no longer 
see everything in one place. You have to move around between a lot of different tools to get access to the data that you need. Um, or uh, they aren't monitoring this stuff at all, uh, which I think presents some obvious challenges to finding problems that are related to your network. Um, and in particular on things like EC2 where uh, you have very poor visibility into the network uh, and are often at the mercy of problems in the EC2 network itself. Um, not having that visibility really makes your life difficult. Yeah, I could see that. So um, have you put this in the customer's hands you know, yet? And did, were you able to get any feedback on, on what are they saying? Uh, the, 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 the big feedback is that they want more, more ways to get data into the system. Um, you know, having this kind of real-time view into your infrastructure um, at this volume where essentially you really can collect everything all the time in real time, um, it's addictive. Um, and so the, the challenge is, is in getting all the data uh, in rather than in finding a way to use it. So Ben, kind of a wrap-up question here. I know you guys are just coming out of the starting gate, but uh, where do you think this technology is going? I mean, is is it going to become even more intelligent and, and warn people way ahead of time before there's even a, a problem that they need to address? What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the future of this is, uh, to, to quote Jeff Jonas, data beats math. And we are going to pump all of the data through this, um, and the sheer volume of data creates all sorts of new opportunities um, for predictive analytics, uh, for data exploration, uh, for uh, troubleshooting, and we're really excited about that. Uh, in, for, in these new, uh, very dynamic cloud environments uh, in particular, uh, having that kind of visibility uh, can really make or break your business. Well, Ben Black, CEO of uh, Boundary, I, I want to thank you once again for coming on the show today. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Okay, folks, that's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on the world of big data.